Welcome to Super Entrepreneurs Podcast. Today we have with us RT Custer. How are you, RT? Ed, I'm I am awesome. And thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate this. No, it's this is my pleasure. Thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show. I'm super excited to to talk to you and learn a lot. And for our audience, obviously, he's gonna learn a lot. Um I, I, we always like to kind of allow the guests to take the stage in your own words, do an introduction, and we'll take it from there. I am happy to. So uh, my name is R.T. Custer. I am a multi-passionate entrepreneur. I have lots of different things going on. Primarily is Vortic Watch Company. Um, it's VorticWatches.com, V-O-R-T-I-C, watches.com. And we take antique American pocket watches and turn them into one-of-a-kind wristwatches. That's my primary business. I'm standing in that building. We got 8,400 square feet here in Fort Collins, Colorado. Wow. We manufacture the watches Amazing. in this building. Um, we try to do as much in-house as we can. And 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 running a watch company, we can get into this. Is it's kind of like I have this manufacturing facility here, but in in watches and luxury goods because our product is 3,000 to 10,000 USD per piece. That's a luxury product. It's all marketing. My role is marketing. And so a few years ago, right in the, actually right in the beginning of the pandemic, I couldn't find a good marketing agency that wanted to go all in and do the stuff that I wanted to do. And so I built my own um, mm -hmm. and I realized through building a, 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 a marketing agency that I didn't really want to run a marketing agency. And so I brought in a business partner and I have business partners in everything that I do. And I love that. And uh, that agency is called Carter and Custer agency. And my role for that is kind of top of funnel business development. Uh, and I focus on running our mastermind program, which is called fast foundation. So those are, those are my things. I run a wristwatch manufacturing company here in Colorado, and I run a mastermind company helping other entrepreneurs try to do the same thing and build companies like mine. That's awesome. How did you get into this watch business? So like, how did it happen? So for me, you know, I studied industrial engineering at Penn State, and mm -hmm. I've always been fascinated in how things work. And my business partner, Tyler, and I were playing golf one day back in college, and we had a ton of ideas around watches. And we were trying to figure out how they work and, and where they come from, where they're made, all that kind of stuff. We It just kind of took us down this rabbit hole of like, I wonder if we should start a watch company, and I wonder if we should at least try to make a watch. And we decided that if we were going to manufacture a wristwatch as part of this new business plan we came up with, we wanted to make as much of it in America as possible. This was like 2011 when we had the idea. And American made has obviously always been talked about, from, but from like a marketing standpoint, that time frame, it was really hot. Everyone was talking about made in USA, reshoring, mm -hmm. onshoring, all that kind of stuff. And so we're like, mm -hmm. okay, this could be really cool. Let's make mm -hmm. American watches again. Like that was kind of the purpose. And we did a bunch of research and we stumbled on the fact that there was these pocket watch companies a hundred years ago and they were all in the U S they were in like Chicago, Boston area, and they made beautiful operational. Yeah. So, so the, these are what we call the great American watch companies. And they're companies okay. like Elgin, Waltham, Hamilton, Illinois. Um, these companies started in like the mid to late 1800s. And they were like the car companies in America today. This was big industry for the United mm. States back then was making pocket watches. And that's what started like the, the westward expansion and industrialization because on the railroads, you need to have a pocket watch. The engineers all mm -hmm. had pocket watches on the railroads to know like if they were on time and where they were going and to call it all that mm -hmm. stuff. All the conductors had them too. And so today, these pocket watches, and there were millions of them made 100 years ago in the U.S. Yeah. But today, they're scrapped by pawn shops for gold and silver of the outside case, leaving the mm -hmm. inside of the pocket watch basically trash. And we realized if we took the inside of the pocket watch and restored it and refurbished it and rebuilt it, 
and then manufactured the outside of the pocket watch, the case and the crown, all the other stuff, we could have a hundred percent made in USA product. And that we, we put that idea on Kickstarter. We called it the American artisan series in 2014. And we've sold every watch we've made since. Yeah, just Amazing. had a, a lucky, good idea, I think. That's great. And uh, do you get custom orders as well? Yeah, so our like business model is totally. Like look for a white face, you know, a specific yeah. design or specific idea that maybe a grandfather had of a watch, you yeah. know, to make something custom. 100%. So we get all kinds of requests for that. And our business model is fairly straightforward. The first and like the most fun way to work with us is if you have a family heirloom pocket watch, mm -hmm. like something mm -hmm. that, you know, your grandfather or grandmother or great grandparents had a hundred years ago, we can turn that pocket watch as long as it's American made and it's, you know, meets a couple other criteria. We can turn that pocket watch into a wrist watch as a service. And we're the only company that does that. And the only thing you have to do is Google search, convert your watch. And that's what we do. We convert Amazing. the pocket watch into a wrist watch. And we love that we get, I mean, we get five or six requests for that service a week. Um, yeah. and we try to narrow it down and focus on, on the right ones and, and restore those family heirlooms. So that's one thing that we do. And then we also, you know, there's a lot of people that don't have a family heirloom. So they're just like, yeah, but I want one of your watches is really cool. And so we have what we call the watch of the day. And every single day we create one new one of a kind wristwatch that gets posted on vorticwatches.com and Vortic Watches Instagram. And at 12 noon mountain time, it, it just, it's listed at a certain price. And when it's sold, it's gone. That's it. It's oh, one watch. Amazing. Um, and, That's awesome. and we love that. It's super fun. People come back like every day and check it out and then like find the one that they want. Um, and that's the second way to work with us. And then the third way is what I have on my wrist. It's called the military edition. Uh, this pocket watch was flown on the B bombers in world war two. It was called the oh. master navigators watch. All the navigators on like nice. the 29s had one of these and we make 50 of them a year and they come out on veterans day, which is November 11th. And so that's our wow. limited edition, if you will. So this is a very, uh, unique niche. Right. We're like a niche inside a niche. It's uh, yeah. you know, the watch industry like is already niche. fairly small. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, and then the American watch industry is almost non-existent. Yeah. There's a handful of companies like ours that make watches in the U S and then we're taking pocket watches and turning them into wrist watches. We call it um, preserving American history, one watch at a time. And so, yeah, what it's, it's a small business, but man, is it fun? <laughs> Doesn't sound small, my friend. <laughs> yeah, oh, I appreciate by, it. <laughs> yeah, that's like it's an incredible, incredible idea, concept. Like, is this? Do you think that this came from that brainstorming between you and your friend, or is there some kind of a? Um, was there an underlying passion? in entrepreneurship to create something unique from before that? Yeah, you know, that's a fantastic question. I mean, literally the, the concept was, was born out of a conversation on the golf course with Tyler. Um, I see. But, but, but he and I come from an entrepreneurial background. You know, his, his family and his dad runs a, runs a mechanic shop in, in Pennsylvania and they've been you know, fixing people's cars and keeping people on the road for, for decades. And, you know, Tyler's just grown up around that kind of energy. And then, um, my, my great grandfather started a Christmas tree farm also in Pennsylvania in 1941. And I was the fourth generation of that farm. And Still so I it? think in both of us, so I, I inherited it in 2020. Um, and I sold the land, but the, the farm still exists and is still being operated wow. by the people that purchased it from us. Um, and they actually kept the name. Uh, we had a lot of tragedy happen Beautiful. in my family, um, yeah. in 2020, I lost my mom and we lost my, my, oh, you know, her dad, my, my grandfather. And, and, uh, I live in Colorado now. And so I was unable to operate the farm and, and keep it going, but the people that purchased it still operate it. Um, and, and like I said, they, they kept the name, which is, That's which is fantastic. And so my, my family's legacy, legacy will live on. And it's, uh, it's called DeLong Christmas tree farm 
in Pennsylvania. And, um, and so long story short, I think we were both, we just grew up around that kind of entrepreneurial energy and we like how things work. We like the old way of doing business, the right way of doing business, you know, just like, I mean, it's, it's a farm and Tyler comes from, from the, you know, mechanic side, like it's good old fashioned blue collar America, try to figure out how to make things and farm things and, and produce things for, for the country. Like uh, that's, that, that was our upbringing. Yeah. That's great. Have you guys ever considered, or maybe you're already doing this, but considered creating um, these unique watches for a brand where the brand gives them out as prizes, for example, like branded watches? Yeah. So I, what, what you're talking about is most of our industry calls it like private label or white label. Yeah. Um, and uh, we, we get requests for yes. that all the time uh, because we, we manufacture them here. The, the problem yeah. that we found is that to manufacture a wristwatch in the United States is very expensive. Of and course. so if we do a partnership like that, it has to be the right partnership because probably, and we're, we're to answer your question, we're building another brand that's our brand, but that manufactures the the movement or the guts of the watch here as well and so it's a lot more scalable and we can bring the price mm -hmm. down you know with economy Good. of scale we can get the price down mm -hmm. and so we're going to keep vortic watch company as it is and turn pocket watches into wrist watches but over here we're, we're going to call it mechanical product company and we're going to manufacture mechanical things watches knives pens cool stuff that, that oh, we cool. can make here in colorado and, and yeah. make it scale. And once we build that company and build the infrastructure we need for it, partnerships like uh -huh. that and white label, private label stuff is totally possible. The first mm -hmm. chance we had to do that, um, we worked with Red Rocks Amphitheater here in Colorado. Um, mm -hmm. And we are the official timekeeper of Red Rocks and we have an awesome contract with them where if Amazing. you get inducted into their hall of fame, you get a Vortec manufactured wristwatch with like the Red Rocks logo on it. Um, and I've, you know, I've met some really cool, like Steve Miller, Jackson yeah. Brown, you know, some really cool artists that we've got to personally oh, deliver amazing. these watches to. So yes, short term, like short term, we're kind of working on it long term. Yeah. I want to do as many of those partnerships as we can because That's it's good. just so fun. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like fun. I think you guys run the company fun. Is that, we try. is that a, a good perception? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we yeah. try. And, and, and we, we also, yeah. we also try not to be too hard on ourselves. Like we say, yeah, you know, we're not, we're not saving any lives here. We're, we're making something you don't need for thousands of dollars. Right. Like that's why, why it's should we not be space. having fun? Right. Like that's, yeah. Yeah. it's like, you know, it's, yeah anyone can have a watch and everybody has an Apple watch. Now everybody can afford a fossil or a Timex and things like that. When you buy a luxury made in America wristwatch, you're buying it to like join the community of other people that like nice things and like American made things like you. And, mm -hmm. and that's, that's the mindset we try to approach it with. Mm -hmm. And to that end, we have a, a YouTube TV show that we call Custer and Wolf building a watch company. And we actually document everything that we do and put it on YouTube because we think the more you learn about us and how we make our stuff, the more you're going to want to join our community by buying a watch. And yeah. we know that because, I mean, we have this insane uh, statistic. It's, it's almost 50% of our customers purchase a second watch from us within 12 months oh, of wow. purchasing their first one. And again, these are thousands that's incredible. of so like, yeah, that's, that's one of the things I'm most proud of is just delivering a really high quality product at a great value with amazing customer service to the point where somebody comes back and they get another one. That's awesome. Do you think pocket watches are coming back? So will come pocket back. watches are coming back and I think it's happening for two reasons. One is people are valuing how, how you look, um, a little higher than, than they used to, at least in the past couple, you know, decades. Um, and especially, you know, post pandemic, people are 
you have more excuses to go out, get dressed up, you know, that kind of stuff. And so, mm -hmm. um, having a pocket watch is kind of like a fun novelty, especially yeah. for young people. I have a lot of Gen Z and millennials that ask us that question of like, Hey, you know, oh. do you have any pocket watches that you haven't turned into wristwatches? I can just buy. I get that question all the time. But you make and, them too. Um, we, we don't manu we've, we've manufactured a couple, like we've made a pocket watch case for, for some of these. But our, our mission is to preserve American history. And I want people to actually use these things every day. And so a wristwatch gets a lot more use than a pocket watch today. Mm -hmm. um, but we have considered, and, and we're probably going to do this at some point, there's always pocket watches that we find that can't be turned into wristwatches for some reason. And so instead of like right now, we just keep them for parts or just keep them kind of just in case. But I think mm -hmm. in the future, we could probably resell, we can fix them up and then just resell them as pocket watches and say, hey, this one we couldn't make into a wristwatch. Mm -hmm. So we'll just keep it a pocket watch. <clears throat> um, and so in the future, I think we'll do that. Right now, it's kind of like a one-off thing, like for friends. If somebody wants a pocket watch, I'll just help them find one. Oh, that's cool. RT, you, the, the the sheer detailed marketing, um, the concept, the flow of the entire company, uh, the picture that I'm, I'm painting in my mind, um, there's 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 a lot of there's a lot of complementary elements in your marketing and how you you grew this business and and how you make it attractive for someone to actually purchase it different things that you mentioned, different layers that bring people together to have that hype. Um, there is some unique marketing skills here. So my next question would be, if you can share, what would you share to someone top three marketing ideas for someone with a product that is going in market and there is some sort of unique element to their product? So <clears throat> number one is focus on email marketing. Okay. And when I say Cold? focus, I mean, no. So build an email list and build an email journey and send a weekly email newsletter, at least oh. weekly. Okay. I, I, I started sending a weekly email newsletter every Tuesday afternoon. And that's my next thing when we hang up is sending my weekly email newsletter uh, about three years ago. Mm -hmm. And when I, when I started down this journey of email marketing, we had maybe 3,000 people on our email list. And that was mostly customers and people that had just signed up over the first five years of business, stuff like that, you know, random emails that we've gathered. And now we have over 40,000 approaching 50,000. Amazing. And, and it's from just consistently sending quality content to mm -hmm. my list at the same time, mm -hmm. every week, every Tuesday, mm -hmm. people expect this email from Vortec Watch Company. And it's one of mm -hmm. the things that I personally still do, even though we have 10 people in this building now, I personally write this email every week because it's that important. Mm -hmm. The other thing in email marketing oh. that we do is, is we built a, an email journey. And I actually made a YouTube video about this that I think is going to come out in a couple of weeks. Um, on the Custer and Wolf channel. And I, I showed, like I screen shared and showed all our data and stuff like that and the flow and how I designed it. Um, just cause I'm like a super nerd about this. I love this stuff. But um, the email journey happens when somebody's on the website and they sign up for my email list. They get 22 emails automatically without me thinking about it that I wrote three years ago. And mm -hmm. we edit them, you know, and put in new pictures and stuff periodically. Mm -hmm. But like, those emails teach you about Vortec Watch Company. They get sent every five or six days automatically without me thinking about it. And mm -hmm. they show you why you should buy a Vortec Watch. And mm -hmm. so that's number one is, is pour a lot of heart and soul as a founder, as the idea person into, into a funnel, but simplify it. Like you don't need all, you don't need click funnels. You don't yeah. need all this stuff. Like just get get an email uh, an email service provider like even mailchimp i use clavio you know there's a million of them set up an email journey and start sending a weekly email newsletter and do it every single week and don't stop no matter how hard it is just keep mm -hmm. doing it that's number one that's great before you go um, to number two though maybe two 
<laughs> before or yeah, bef- yeah, it's fine. Before you go to number, to, I don't know. yeah, no worries. Before you go to the second one, you know, if they're starting a company, they might not have an email list, right? What do you recommend yep. they do to start building an email list? Yeah, so I guess let's let's call that number two because I was going to say number two is okay. build a community, um, build okay. build a community and a following around your product. Okay, and the the best way to do that is to talk about your product. You know, the, the, the thing that I think people in entrepreneur, like a lot of entrepreneurs, I see this all the time. There's, there's not very many networking events anymore. There's not very much, there's not other ways we get to talk about ourselves and our product much anymore, except things like this, you know, like I'm, I'm on a podcast yeah, tour. Podcast. I, I actually or clubhouse. I pay someone. Exactly. I, I pay someone to go find me people like you that hopefully mm-hmm. might interview yeah. me and, and flood the internet with my voice spreading mm-hmm. good news that yeah. Vortic Watch Company exists and you should come by it. Like I am yeah. a preacher at this point, just trying to tell people Amazing. about my company. Never stop yeah. talking about your company and being yeah. positive about it. In, mm-hmm. You can be negative in private. You know, if you have a mm-hmm. mastermind group of other entrepreneurs yeah. or you have a couple of friends that are entrepreneurs and you can share the, the shitty things and the hard things, share that. But like when you're talking in public and it doesn't have to be podcasts, um, you can get interviewed on YouTube shows, mm-hmm. anywhere that more than one human is going to hear you mm-hmm. talk about it and then have a call to action. I mean, we just spent the last five minutes talking about email marketing and funnels, all that mm-hmm. stuff. Hopefully when people are listening to this, they go to vortexwatches.com, they yeah. hop on the email list so they can see what yeah. I'm talking about. Now mm-hmm. I just got a bunch of subscribers. I'm building my community, right? Yes. Um, the only way you can foster and build a community is if you're always talking about it, never, yeah. never shut up about your business, like be yeah. annoying, right? That's, yeah. that, that's how you grow the email list. That's how you grow the social yeah. following. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So that's number two. Yeah, for me, I, I can, I can relate to that RT. Sorry. But for me, like the same thing is that I consistently, like I continuously just, just online, if either, you know, uh, post or, or podcast interviews or whatever it is, I'm always on it, but, but it's coming from, from my heart. Like it just comes out because I want to share it. Right. Yeah. So that, that passion is so important. You have that as well. Like when you, do this. There's a drive behind you. It's not that you mentioned that being negative or positive. It's it's you just feel so positive about your brand, right? So you're talking yeah. about it. You're sharing all the time. It's coming from your heart. People see that, right? And they resonate and they want yeah. to be around it. And I, I can't tell you how many times I've done the elevator pitch. You know, Vortec Watch yeah. Company salvages and restores antique American pocket yeah. watches and turns them into one of a kind wrist watches, <laughs> preserving American history one watch yeah. at a time. I've said that. 10,000 times, you know, but that's, and, and still to this day, people send me a LinkedIn message or an email and they're just like, I love watches. I love American history. I love manufacturing. And you've been around since 2014 and I still haven't heard of you until today. What am I doing wrong? And I'm like, what am I doing wrong? Yeah. (laughs) Telling everyone, come on, you know? So yeah. you've got to keep going. People don't know you exist, you know? It's, mm-hmm. And so, that's excellent. yeah, that's definitely excellent. number two. Um, mm-hmm. And, that's and good. I mean, for sake of time, because this mm-hmm. is fun. I love this question. Number three mm-hmm. is know your numbers. Let's talk about okay. money. So you, mm-hmm. if you have a product, because you said like ideas for people to have a physical product, right? You should want to sell a physical yeah. product online. Yeah. So these are probably people mm-hmm. that are building a Shopify store or something. selling something on Amazon, you know, something mm-hmm. like that. No, you have to know your numbers. How much are you selling it for top line revenue? Mm-hmm. What is the cost of goods sold? You know, mm-hmm. how much, how all the numbers, everything that goes into it, packaging, shipping, logistics, mm-hmm. fulfillment, everything. all that stuff, the cost of manufacture, you have to know those numbers. And then you have to know how much it costs to get a customer. From a marketing yeah. standpoint, that's in between. Mm-hmm. So if you, you know, revenues up here, your cost of goods, what's in between, a lot of people call it overhead, but overhead is mm-hmm. not descriptive enough. You have to know mm-hmm. how much does it cost in marketing? How much is advertising different than marketing? And yes, those two things are different. Marketing is very different than advertising. And if you mm-hmm. don't know that, dive into the numbers, ask somebody like me 
if you can see their P and L or their profit and loss mm -hmm. and look mm -hmm. at that profit and loss uh, analysis, that sheet, look at the mm -hmm. balance sheet as well. Those are the two documents you have to know as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. you have to know every single line item on what those two things are, or you've lost. Mm -hmm. So know your numbers, know where they come from and make sure that the bottom line, when everyone, somebody says the bottom line, that's the last line on that profit yeah. and loss statement. That mm -hmm. has to be positive. It has to be mm -hmm. black, not red. Yeah. If yeah. that line is positive, that means you're profitable, which means uh -huh. you are, have a sustainable business which means you get to do all the other things that we just talked about. Yeah. Excellent. Love it. RT great insight, great information. You added so much value to our network. Uh, we always like to ask our guests, what's their inner superpower that got them to this point today? Oh gosh. I love that question. Thank you. Shed. I think, I think my superpower in are you familiar with human design? It's like, it's like this cool, a lot of people, um, a lot of people talk about it when they no. talk about Enneagram and things like that. It's like this psychological concept of human design. There's a bunch of memes about it of like, if she asks you where and, and what time you were born run for the Hills. Cause she's trying to figure out your human design. It's like this really funny thing. Okay. Human design is this, this concept of like, what were we born to do purpose. and and what is your purpose and in human design you know there's like there's um the generator there's like manifesting generator there's a manifester there's all kinds of like classifications mm -hmm. my subclassification is called the general okay. and I am actually, it was cool when I learned this because I'm a distant relative to General Custer. Oh, okay. And and that that's also cool. My my dad has like this whole lineage, you know, from Ancestry.com of how we're like the seventh cousin, you know, twice removed or whatever from this famous general. Nice. And, and they call me the general. And the reason for that is, and this is, I feel like my superpower, is that I have this weird luck. I think it's partially luck, partially karma, whatever. I am really good at finding great people and putting them in the right seats in the army. So if you think about it, like a general, mm -hmm. I keep finding like the other people in this building that are building watches that are helping me write my email marketing mm -hmm. that are talking to all my customers mm -hmm. that are filming my YouTube videos, these other amazing humans on my team mm -hmm. that I found, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I found them somehow. I found the right person for that position. And then I put the right person in the right job mm -hmm. and I keep getting lucky and I keep doing that and building these awesome teams around me to actually achieve and execute these crazy, cause I'm a visionary. I have crazy ideas awesome. and I want to build a billion dollar brand in watches. Perfect. So Love it. there's no way I can do that by myself. And so I think that's really been my superpowers, just awesome. Finding great that's, people and letting them do the work. That's excellent. That's excellent. That's a, uh, uh a very important skill and ability because, you know, people build a company, right? And if you make that wrong decision, sometimes it's costly. So if you're able to kind of puzzle it in together in the right places with the right talent, you, you have a, a gem there. So this is awesome. Thank you so much for sharing all this information, RT. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say thank you. It's It's been a pleasure. I love this conversation and your questions are fantastic. So I'm just happy oh, to be here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, RT. It's a pleasure. Ple pleasure is all mine. It was really exciting to learn about this. I, I love brands. I love products. And, and you coming on the show was an honor. And I appreciate you. And keep keep going. And I'm looking forward to seeing that billion-dollar company. Contact us again. Once you have anything that you want to announce or anything that you want to um, add value in, in the marketplace, come on back to the show. We'll be happy to have this conversation again. Keep in touch. I built some of my best relationships on the show. Um, I'll love to uh, uh, stay in touch. 
And, you know, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. Thanks again for having me. And, and same goes to you. If there's anything ever I can do to support you and, and the show and just building community and podcasting in general, I'm, I'm here for it. I love this stuff. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you.